So I'll take this piece of aluminum when I'm ready to cut. Tighten that up and that will keep my piece uh, clamped and keep it from spinning around. And that can be dangerous because that can pinch our fingers, that can pull our fingers towards the blade and this will secure it. It'll also give us something to hold on to, some leverage. And so depending on where we need to be, we can have the clamp over here, we can turn this around, uh, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. To set this up for a cut, I wanna make sure that I raise the guard so that it clears our piece of aluminum, just by about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch at the most. I don't want there to be much room in there, just enough for a piece of aluminum to slide through. I wanna make sure that our vise remains in contact with the table and doesn't slide off the edge here. So if I need to make my cut on this side of the tape, I'll bring this in a little bit. And I put this on my right hand side because I want a little more control. I have a little more finesse, I'm right-handed. So I wanna have more control in my right hand. And I'm gonna use my left hand just to brace it and to help keep it square as I push forward. But I'm gonna let the blade do uh, most of the work. And it's gonna take some time. This is a two inch thick piece of aluminum and this blade is trying to cut through two inches at once at a certain point. So it'll go kind of quick and then it'll slow down and it'll take quite a while. You gotta be careful as you come out that it's going to that it's going to speed up again and you don't want to go too quickly through the material you ha you also have to be careful because you don't want to pinch the blade you know the vice might go this way and if you're holding this and putting too much pressure that way you're going to pinch the blade between these two pieces of aluminum so on your way out you also want to make sure that you're pushing from one side and more guiding from the other. Maybe getting a little bit, most of the pushing is gonna be done with this side so we can avoid uh, catching our blade in here. I'm going to raise the guard. And then I can check it with my piece of metal and come down a little bit. Now that we're ready to cut, Make sure all safety precautions are taken. Make sure all guards are in place, earplugs, safety glasses. Make sure you stay out of the cut, so never have your, your hand anywhere in line with that cut. Always to the right and to the left, and make sure you're well out of the range of the blade. Tie up any hair, any loose chains, roll up your sleeves. Make sure there's nothing hanging from your hoodies, nothing baggy that's going to get caught in the blade or pull your hand or arm towards that blade. Bandsaws were designed to cut meat so they will cut into your hand. Be careful. Take your time. If you feel fatigued, take the piece out. Take a rest. Let's begin our cut. You want to get your eye right in line with the blade. Right now I have the camera lined up in the exact place I want my eye, so you can see that the blade is on the right hand side of my tape. So I wanna keep as, as much of my tape as possible. If you're doing the opposite, you tape up the other side, just know which side of the line you're using. Same thing if you use a Sharpie. Uh, if you're gonna cut on that Sharpie line, if you're gonna cut on the right hand side or the left hand side, just be consistent with what you do and know where you need to cut and make sure you measure at least twice. So you don't want to start the cut with the piece of stock or any material ever resting against the blade. It can crack, it can twist the piece, um, you can get metal that can go flying out, so you want to be very careful. So let's bring this back a little bit. We're going to hit start. I'm going to look at it from the top. I'm going to try to take a look a little bit over this perspective. I'm going to leave the camera where it is, I'm going to look over the camera and try to look basically over this edge to the other side. And then once I get through, then I'll start keeping my eye lined up with the tape, the blade, and I'll move my head from looking straight on top to looking more from this perspective. Let's get started. Make sure your piece is backed away from the blade. Nothing else is in your workspace. 
Nothing is in the way of the blades. All guards are in place. You have your safety equipment on, such as earplugs and eye protection. No gloves. Let's get started. So as you start the cut, it's much faster than as you get towards the center. You want to be mindful of the angle of your piece, but expect it to uh, turn a little bit. You'll notice throughout this video, as I'm moving forward, my piece of aluminum is moving a little. I'm cutting by hand. It's going to not be perfect, so you will have to compensate and move back and forth. Just make sure you're not twisting the blade. Try to stay on target. You're going to get a little bored, especially on a piece like this that's going to take 15 minutes or so. So just stay focused if you feel strained or you're, if you feel like you're not focusing. Go ahead and take a break. Back the piece off. Turn off the bandsaw and just go ahead and take a break. You could see several times I would back off and continue to move forward and back off and reposition. Um, just go with the front of the blade. That's where all of your action is taken. And as you reach the middle of the piece, um, it looks like we're past the middle, but we're really not because we are looking at it a little bit from the top. So as we reach the middle, it slows down and it seems like it's gonna take forever for like the, I'd say the middle half inch or so, but just take your time. You wanna let the, you wanna let the blade do all the cutting. Don't rush it, don't force the, the piece into the teeth. If you find yourself twisting, just take a break, pull the piece out and reposition. Don't worry so much about if your piece looks a little twisted, you know, check the blade, make sure the blade is not twisting. Um, if you need to remove a little more material, you can kind of move your way back and forth and cut a little bit of extra material out there so that you can go at an angle a little bit better and readjust so that you're cutting a straight line. I'm using a pretty thick blade, a pretty wide blade. So there's a lot of stress and there's, there's a lot of friction being caused on the side of the blade, as well as the front of the blade and my piece of aluminum. So just make sure you've got enough room in there. Make sure you back off every once in a while, move your way forward, back off a little bit, go forward, that you have enough room that all those, that all that material is moving out of the way check to make sure the piece is not getting too hot. I normally don't use lubricant when I'm cutting aluminum such as round stock or a sheet for that matter. Maybe a little bit of wax on a jeweler saw, uh, but normally if I'm cutting some round stock such as this, I have a pretty large blade, a bimetal blade. It's made for this type of material. If you have a smaller blade with smaller teeth, you may have to use a little lubricant because if there's more friction, it may heat up more. Or if you on the lathe, absolutely, you're gonna to have to use lubricant. So that was about 15 minutes of cutting. Let's take a look at the end of the piece. You can see here, those cut marks. So if you see a piece of metal and you see those lines going in one direction, it was probably cut with a saw. You can see that edge. And then there's that last piece of aluminum. It's just a, a little edge there. Be careful, it's very sharp. We can see that's excess. So I can actually still see the scribe in a couple of spots. One, two, and then there's extra right here. So that's pretty flat. And let's check it with a square. Let's check it with a square and see how off it is. So this edge, it wants to rock a little bit. So it's a little high over here, and you can see that right here. There's a little extra metal, so that means that this square is kicked off a little bit like this. But I bet as we approach this here, it's probably gonna straighten out. That looks pretty good right there. It's pretty good there. And as we get back to the other side, we get kind of a rocking action. But this is gonna be great for our lathe. Um, this will hold the, the jaws of the lathe, only hold about this much. Sometimes if the pieces are a little skinnier or if the lathe is a little larger, you can actually put that material all the way through the headstock. That's not the case here because I have a 
medium sized lathe with a pretty good chunk of aluminum. So I'm gonna re remove that aluminum. I'm going to machine the front side. So I'm gonna face it. And then I'm gonna machine the front edge of it, which is turning it. I'm gonna flip that piece around in the, in the lathe, get that nice and straight, and then I'm gonna face or machine the other side. Then I have a billet that I know is square. So I can put this piece back in the lathe, take it out, and using a four jaw chuck, I can get that to be really square. And then once I take, and then once I take it out of the lathe, I'm gonna bring it back over to a drill press and I'm gonna drill some holes in a circular pattern, put it back on the lathe, machine that surface down and back up to reveal those holes. And we'll have to flip this around a couple times in the lathe. Make sure you clean up, return all tools where they belong, and also return the guard to where it belongs. Um, since you don't know what kind of metal is being cut on here, you could either drop it all the way down or just pop it up maybe an eighth of an inch.